Hello and welcome to the GB Transfer Show. This is episode six. And in every episode, we've been trying to bring you a different angle into transfer, this transfer window, but also just generally transfer deals. So today, I'm very excited to hear from an agent who, amongst others, brought uh, Michael Laudrup to Swansea and a few other things uh, that if he wants to, he'll, uh, he'll give us his insight of. And also, he'll try to explain to us why is this transfer window so manic, so special, so different, so crazy. That's Marcelino Elena, former Spanish international. But first of all, as always, let me hand you over to Aria Yoyutsu. Thank you so much, Guillaume. Yes, this is episode six of uh, the GB Transfer Show. We are almost at the end of the transfer market uh, in January. And uh, it's great to have you here, Marcelino. Uh, the first thing that we actually want to understand is the value of the January transfer uh, window and, uh, you know, the deals going through. What happens in January as opposed to what happens in summer? Well, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me to your channel. Uh, the general market uh, is usually uh, more uh, um, an emergency one, right? And, and the needs of the clubs uh, change uh, through, through, through the uh, whole month. I mean, uh, by the end of December, clubs need a left back and by the end of January, they, they end up uh, loaning a, a goalkeeper or, or a striker. It uh, usually goes what's uh, needed um, in the middle of the season. Uh, clubs are struggling for points and, and those at the bottom uh, want to get away from there. Those at the top uh, want to just get that extra inch uh, uh, ahead of the competitors. So. Uh, goals are always uh, wanted, but very difficult to to get. So in the end, it's it's more about uh, what's what's left in the in the market rather than what can I buy. And only top clubs and real top clubs who can buy uh, buy out clubs, etc., uh, can afford to to do something uh, really interesting. Marcelino, tell us more about uh, how it all works. How how um, you know. People are trying to uh, uh, unearth jewels in January when it's so, so difficult. What is the secret to do it well? Well, the thing is that um, in summer, the clubs, uh, uh, they, they really have a, a, a program. They know what they want to uh, get in. They know what they want to get out. But uh, again, in, in January, you have to be even closer to clubs or, or you have to be in that uh, right conversation that leads you into a possible deal because... As I said before, uh, the needs change from one day to another. And uh, uh, when they start thinking about one position, they end up uh, hearing that a player is available on loan uh, from somewhere. And they say, oh, hold on, uh, we we rather get a, a, a right winger than a midfielder. Because uh, if we let it go, uh, it, it may disappear uh, this afternoon. So they get into these kind of uh, very quick decisions. And well, our job is to uh, get them into those quick decisions in your favor and your players' uh, uh, favor. Trying to understand these uh, dealings better, I thought our viewers will really benefit from having uh, you, Marcelino, talk to us about what exactly happens in a transfer. Like, do clubs uh, call you up or do the uh, clubs call up the uh, other club that they want to buy a player from? How does this happen? Well, there's obviously different ways of uh, uh, starting a, a deal. Um, sometimes the club doesn't know that the player is available. Uh, this is our job to let them know, uh, to, to, to make it easy for them to get them the information uh, clear and to make them uh, secure that they are not uh, wasting time. Uh, time. Time wasters are not wanted in this uh, job. Uh, this is why um, uh, clubs uh, appreciate or make difference uh, between some agents and, and, and others who are just offering things that are going to be impossible. So, um, uh, knowing the type of needs that uh, a club uh, may have is so, so helpful. And this is why, uh, as an agent, you have to uh, well uh, know or be updated about the, uh, the, the club's uh, situations, how the team is performing, what they need, etc. But uh, then, if uh, if a club uh, relies on you or they trust you, they may call you and ask, "Hey, have you got somebody for this position?" But it's usually the the reverse. It's usually uh, agents uh, making phone calls, sending messages, and trying to let the club know that the player is in the market. And and from there, you start uh, uh, you, you you ignite a, a, an interest and 
and and you you start from from there. Then if if a second call happens, then there's uh, there's uh, there may be something there. If that second phone call doesn't happen, then you have to keep on calling others. I guess what's important in in this window and and in the next one as well is that you've done your homework already. So at this point, the messages are short. Uh, the mes messages have to come very quickly. You have to know who to trust and who you don't trust. If somebody appears all of a sudden, you will probably, as an agent and the club as well, will be wondering, like, where is this coming from? So the, wor the work that you've done in previous months, it's all about gaining the trust, knowing who you have to talk to. And right now it's like, okay, let's deliver. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah, that that that's uh, that's uh, very true. I mean, uh, once you you earn the reputation and the clubs uh, trust you and the guys at those clubs are in a way uh, uh, th their jobs are relying on you in a way as well. If you uh, make them waste time or if you lead them into uh, the wrong deal or the wrong situation, then they may be losing on other options and and in the end they've not done their jobs. So. Uh, they they need to trust you. They need to know that they are going to the right place, or that at least at least there's some substance in in that offering that you are making, right? So, uh, in the end, for them, it's about uh, making the right choice as well. And uh, they may have uh, two, three, four deals in place, and then sometimes uh, they um, kind of uh, use you or use your time and get take you there, or they they. They have you all there, and they, they they make their choice in the right in the last uh, moment when they can pick uh, which of the um, two or three deals they have in place they are going to go for. So uh, sometimes you are also wasting your time for them, but this is the game. Uh, breaking down a deal itself uh, when it gets closer to deadline day. Uh, today is 29th of January, and I'm sure uh, it's just around the corner. How does that happen? Like, do you go to the club? Uh, are there these faxes that go back and forth? Like uh, it happened in the case of the hair that just didn't go on, uh, go through on time. What are the workings of it? Well, uh, technology obviously is uh, is a massive help in those days, and um, you can do a deal uh, uh, from from home. You know, you can be in bed uh, closing a deal, but but um, uh, depending on the situation, you like to be there. You like to be with the player. Uh, guiding him, uh, he feels insecure about all the paperwork that has to be uh, signed, and you, you, he needs to feel uh, secure that everything he's signing is in the right place. Uh, usually, a player doesn't travel to um, to the club or, or doesn't get to sign the documents or, or sorry to, to travel uh, um, there um, before uh, all documents are signed and sorted uh, because uh, well, you are in risk of. Uh, um, putting yourself in a in a wrong situation, uh, getting into the club's uh, facilities, or or being seen by uh, journalists, uh, spotted by fans, and then nothing happens, and and it's very embarrassing for the player. We've seen uh, some of those um, uh, things happening, so you have to be careful with the um, uh, with the process, with the um, uh, protocol, with the protocol, yeah. And and uh, make sure that you do uh, everything in the in the right place. And obviously, this is uh, more often uh, possible if you do it with a professional that than with you doing it with an uh, amateur agent or somebody who is not uh, really um, uh, involved in the business. A couple of things I wanted to ask you because they both fascinate me. One, a lot of people are saying, "What are agents for?" I think if you listen, uh, we listen to yourself, you already given us some insight of what's happened. The play insecure about bureaucracy, pl uh, clubs that need information, you have the contacts that the clubs won't have to act immediately. Those things are, are important and without that, uh, the deals will may become even more expensive for clubs than less expensive by, by, uh, because the commission has to be paid. But it has to be paid for a reason. So explain what else you think ages are important. Well, uh, again, if uh, if a player um, makes a mistake, it can cost him uh, money or can cost him a, a future situation, a future issues uh, with the club. If a club makes a mistake, it's an embarrassing situation. And we've seen sometimes uh, clubs uh, getting embarrassed for, uh, for not uh, proceeding. In the in the right way or for uh, being uh, um, uh, cheated by by an agent or by a player, 
so in the end, uh, the know-how is uh, very important. I think uh, uh, sometimes the agents are blamed uh, for some things they are not really doing and, and uh, getting their bad image, uh, probably because the clubs want to uh, give that image as well to the agents, so they get a, a, a bit less uh, <laughs> agency fees. But, um, but in the end, uh, you, you provide with the lawyers, you provide with your experience, um, and, and all that uh, makes the player uh, making secure that uh, they are doing the right thing and also uh, club owners or uh, directors uh, that uh, they are also in the hands of an expert uh, who is guiding them uh, properly and uh, to, to, to get uh, their target which is uh, getting that player on board which is what they need uh, for for winning games and making the, the fans happy so in the end I think uh, that the role of, uh, of an agent is, is quite important in in these days and, and makes things uh, happen and, and, and work in the, in the football industry as well. Secondly, the media. Uh, everybody plays the media and the media play as well. And for a fan, that's where the information gets to. Fans don't get to talk to agents, don't get to talk to clubs, don't get to talk to uh, players. So it gets to the media and then they have to be experienced enough to identify if the message comes from the club. If the message comes from the player stroke agent, if the message comes from betting companies that want you to put money on something that probably won't happen, but it will make them richer. So I guess you as an agent, without giving examples, have played that game because it's part of, um, what can we put it, part of the business, isn't it? Well, um, that's another area that you have to uh, manage in a certain way, the public image of uh, players, uh, those days is uh, very important, especially uh, those uh, players at the at the top. Uh, they have a, a very uh, important public image that they have to also protect. They wa don't want uh, their names to be involved into uh, certain transfers that are never going to happen or that never existed, uh, because it may damage uh, their relationships with the with their current uh, clubs. So uh, you have to take a few things into consideration. But uh, on the other um hand you may have a player you want to promote and that you want to link with uh, certain uh, clubs and and we all know that this happens and and sometimes we see some um, names uh, connected uh, with um, with uh, some uh, bigger clubs and you think oh come on that's never going to happen how can that player be uh, linked with those clubs uh, and you you perceive that there's something behind there and it's just like a marketing process that's uh, going on or um, or it's just to, in, to inflate a, a, a deal and, and, and get um, uh, yeah, the best possible contract for, for, for the clients because uh, if they are um, linked with Real Madrid when they are going to uh, wanted by Barcelona then uh, we know how it works they, they, that battle starts and and sometimes um, uh, those things are used in order to, for, to, to, to get a benefit for, for the client. So, well, this is probably uh, what you are uh, uh, suggesting that happens, uh, right? <laughs> Let me give you an example of that. The Licht, for instance, uh, who Ronald Koeman reckons he will be the best centre-back in the world in a couple of years, uh, is being closely linked to Barcelona. A few stories have come out from there. Barcelona right now don't have the budget for it, but they don't mind being linked to that deal because, of course, if Manchester City or Real Madrid won the Licht, it'll be more expensive to get him. So that one of the ways that how it works. Aria? Thank you, Marcelino. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. We'll let you go before we get down to the five that uh, Guillaume and I will talk about. So thanks a lot. Thanks for your time. All right. Thank you. Thanks to you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Well, let's get down to the five uh, for, for today's episode. Um, first up is uh, Felipe Coutinho. We spoke about him earlier in, uh, in the month in this show. Uh, 26 years old, of course. He signed um, fr uh, from Liverpool, to, uh, came to Barcelona about a year ago. Uh, he has struggled this season. Uh, he's made about 19 appearances this season in the La Liga uh, with just four goals and two assists. Uh, Guillaume, again, speculation about his future. Barcelona don't want to get rid of him now. That is the end of that, obviously. That became very clear earlier in the market, in the transfer window, and we, we said so. But there is a big but because uh, the problem of Barcelona is that they are increasing the wage list, having decreased it, of course, but with the 
with the signing of um, De Jong. They're trying to get Raviot. Uh, they may have to get rid of some players. In fact, De Jong was told that uh, by him coming in meant that two regulars were going to go. Uh, one of them could be Rakitic. That's what Barcelona is trying, to get rid of Rakitic. But Rakitic will tell you, he's 31, he's absolutely happy at Barcelona. To go somewhere else, he'll have to be something absolutely amazing. Nothing like that on the table. The cover of Sport today, the Catalan newspaper, had Rakitic link to Chelsea. But right now, no offer of any kind because uh, it's more like Barcelona wanting to push out. So in terms of Coutinho... They haven't got to that stage in what they have to push or want to push, continue out. But the jury is out. It's not clear what his role is at Barcelona. He's not confident either. So unless you improve, Barcelona may just decide that the other player that they want to get rid of is Coutinho. Right now, that's not the case. But let's keep an eye on it because the summer could be interesting. He's got time to make an impact, of course, but right now he hasn't done the impact that people expected. Just a little thing. Uh, I read in the papers, and this seems a little dubious, uh, about how the players aren't willing to pass to Coutinho anymore. This seems really unlikely to have happened. I just want to make sure. No, it's a story that comes on the back of the doubts that he's, uh, he's himself, but with his body language, with his performances, uh, are creating doubts that come from 1v1 situations that he doesn't uh, finish, with the fact that uh, he doesn't give too many assists, that he hasn't got much relevance in the game, but he's got time to improve. The big games are going to come now. So, as I said, nobody has taken a conclusion on Coutinho yet, but he has to deliver. He is uh, has been very expensive and has to. Um, it's his turn to actually show on the pitch what he's capable of. At the moment, we know of his potential. He hasn't delivered yet. Number two on that list. Let's move that. Uh, move on to that. Uh, it's Juan Mata, a Manchester United player. Uh, he's 30 years old. Apparently, Manchester United have offered him a one-year contract extension, uh, but he's been linked with moves to Arsenal uh, in the summer. Of course, he will be available for free. What's with that? Well. Quite clearly, the number one target for Mata is to stay at Manchester United. But quite clearly as well, there are clubs interested in his situation. And yes, one of them is Football Club Barcelona. Uh, they seen that uh, with his quality, with his experience, he could add, add something. It's not the only club that won him. There are others that are interested in him. And of course, the fact that uh, he's getting close to the end of his contract makes it very, very interesting. But the priority, it is to stay at Manchester United. If Jose Mourinho had stayed on, I think Mata would have been let go. Now, the priority is not so much to give a contract that completely convinced Mata, but perhaps to decide who the new manager is going, is going to be. Because then he will have to be part of the discussions about what happens with Mata. Was that your phone ringing right now? Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm so sorry about that. That's. Um, I'm going to switch that off right now. Um, the, next, <laughs> the next one, um, of course, that we have on our list here, is uh, actually two players. We have Mesut Ozil and Ivan Perisic here. Uh, Ozil, um, 30 years old, not really getting quite the impact at Arsenal that he would want. Uh, he seems set to uh, be part of a makeshift deal so that they can get Ivan Perisic over. Ivan Perisic has handed in a transfer request. Is that coming through or is that a bit premature? Swap deals are very, very difficult. We reach in the end of the transfer window, so that's not going to happen. Uh, does Arsenal want it to happen? I'm not sure that's the case either because they are two completely situations. We know that Arsenal want two loan deals. One, they want it to be a defender, but not so much a centre-back, perhaps a full-back because of injuries and so on. Perisic was the same. Can we have a loan deal? Perisic is like, yeah, I'd love to go to Arsenal. But Inter is saying, we haven't got any offer to buy Perisic because that's all we would like to do, to sell the player if he doesn't want to be here. So that's where it's all standing on that one. In the case of Ossil, different, absolutely different situation in terms of Arsenal don't want to link it to anything else. Ozil has to decide if he wants to be at Arsenal, he knows what he has to do, so he's got to decide if he wants to do that. And if he doesn't want to do that, and it's a lot of things that have to do with his position, with playing off, the, you know, the, the, the moves off the ball, the, the work that he has to put off the ball, if he doesn't want to do that, then of course he won't be good enough for Arsenal, and Arsenal will sell. But they're still in the process of trying to convince him. Uh, right now, what we're seeing is Anuzil that is not reacting to um, those inputs from the manager. And if he doesn't, 
it's up to him. He has to be uh, professional. He has to demand more of himself. He was given the opportunity earlier in the season to uh, to make a claim for the lineup. Now he's far away from that, uh, and it's uh, everybody's waiting for Ozil to respond. Uh, those stories about swap deals with Isco and Ozil, Perisic and Ozil, uh, James Rodriguez and Ozil have no, never been true. And right now it's all a matter of activating Ozil for what it is going to be a very important last six months of the season for Arsenal. Ozil, of course, signed a new contract just a year ago. And that should keep him, uh, well, it's supposed to keep him in, uh, the contract runs on till 2021, the summer of 2021. He's just uh, had four goals and two assists in 17 games this season. And of course, wants to make more of an impact. Let's move on quickly to the next one. Uh, that is um, Callum hudson Odoi, the 18-year-old Chelsea winger, who scored a fantastic goal uh, against Sheffield Wednesday in the FA Cup uh, this weekend. He has handed in a transfer request. Chelsea seems set on keeping him. And there is interest from Bayern Munich. Uh, what's happening there? Just you described it there. Basically, Chelsea are saying, sorry, we're not letting you go. You are 18 and we're giving you much more time, playing time than other 18-year-olds. But he feels that uh, he's ready for more. And perhaps he'll have more opportunities to be given more playing time right now at Bayern Munich than at Chelsea. That's quite clear. Bayern Munich had said, don't worry, we'll come back in the summer. So he's going to have to... Um, keep playing at Chelsea, keep fighting for his place at Chelsea. I met him. I met him. I was so impressed about his um, his intelligence, his maturity. He knew what, uh, not so much how good he can be, because uh, you don't know until in two or three years' time when he has had continuation of playing uh, time, but he wanted to be the best. And he knew how to do it, and he was going about it the right way. It's all about work, being humble. I admire uh, Hudson Odoi, and I think he, the, there is a top player there. I'm glad that Chelsea have realised that they don't haven't let him go just for a, a bunch of money, and that they're giving him the opportunity to uh, to improve at Chelsea. But Bayern will come back, and uh, if that's the case, there will be a battle there for the player because I think he's made his mind up that he probably will improve better at Bayern, unless. Chelsea all of a sudden change their, their stand and not only give him a few minutes, but make him an important part of the team, which I doubt that may happen this season. So interesting uh, situation. And yes, I do believe that he will become one of the best players around. Of course, he just has 18 months left on his contract. So uh, come the summer, he uh, the asking price for him may drop a little bit. Um, he's just made five um, starts this season for Chelsea, none of them in the Premier League. And I guess that's probably an issue, isn't it? Yes, but Chelsea will want to give him another contract, of course. He won't sign another contract unless he plays more. So it's one of those with a lot of question marks, uh, but one to keep an eye on. And one in which, as we hear from Marcelino, I ages are important. They have to listen to the player. They have to prioritise, of course, what the player wants. And right now, what uh, Hudson Odoi feels is that he's ready to play regularly for a top club. So he'll go to that club that gives him that chance. At number five is Johnny Castro Otto. Uh, the uh, fullback who's playing at Wolves right now, but he obviously belongs to Atletico Madrid. Uh, apparently, Wolves want to make him a, into a permanent deal uh, for a club record signing. Um, is that happening? Well, we left this one uh, because we had a, an agent uh, today that we heard from, because this is uh, this is crucial that the agent, the, particip the participation of the agent. The agent here, the crucial agent here is Jorge Mendes. Jorge Mendes is very close to Atletico Madrid. Bear with me, because this has to do with Atletico Madrid, of course, and Morata. Even though he was not part of the uh, Morata deal as such, by bringing Morata to Atletico Madrid, Atletico Madrid needed to get rid of two wages because they are at the edge, at the top of the financial fair play in terms of wage uh, uh, expenditure. So, Jorge Mendes, very close to Atletico Madrid, was asked by Atletico Madrid, can you sort this out for us? Can you help us? So, number one, what he did was he got Gelson Martins, who belongs to Atletico Madrid, on loan to Monaco. Jorge Mendes is very, very close to Monaco. And uh, Wolves had no need to basically just right now pay £20 million uh, pounds for a, a player that they've got on loan until the end of the season. No need for that. But by doing that, Atletico Madrid uh, gets enough um, budget to actually pay for Morata both wages and potentially a transfer at the end of the season uh, that, you know, it's within the realms of financial fair play. So 
crucial here, the job of Georgia Mendes. So, uh, by the way, the agents are, the top agents have been meeting uh, with the idea of counterattacking a little bit against some of the rules that uh, FIFA are putting in place to stop their job or to uh, diminish the, the, their importance in, in football. And we'll have to keep an eye on that. I'm in touch with three or four of these super agents because they believe that they need to make a stand on what's happening and make to have to explain to people what they do and why uh, they are important. We'll listen to them at some point, but right now that's what I can tell you about that. Thank you, Guillaume. Yes, we have rattled through those. Uh, we have had Marcelino talk to us today. Uh, this has been an eventful episode. Uh, we have got another one coming up on deadline day, of course, where uh, we talk about the latest deals, what's going on and uh, what's going to come through. So do stay tuned to this. Uh, this has been the GB Transfer Show, in, um, of course, in association with Football Index.